Hi, my name is Dr. Kathleen Garinger. Tonight, we will be talking about pellet therapy. Around the age of 25, our organ starts to produce less and less hormones. Our thyroid, testosterone, and progesterone starts to decrease. Our growth hormones, DHEA and prenatalone, and also melatonin starts to decrease as we age as well. However, our insulin resistance hormones, such as insulin, cortisol, and estrione, which is the bad form of estrogen, starts to increase. So signs and symptoms of hormonal imbalances include extreme fatigue around 3 or 4 p.m., mood swing, anxiety, tension and irritability, sleep disturbance, especially waking up about 3 to 4 a.m., memory loss, depression, lack of focus, brain fog, hot flashes, night sweat, weight gain, joint pain, bladder symptoms, frequent UTIs, urinary tract infections, migraine or even severe headaches, decrease in sex drive and also performance. Again, these are signs and symptoms of hormonal imbalances. Again, today we will be talking about pellet therapy. And when we talk about pellet therapy, we're talking about testosterone in a pellet form or even estradiol if needed for women that no longer has a menstrual cycle. And these pellets are very, very small. They are the size of a grain. So these pellets are available in multiple dosages. It is tailored towards to that individual needs. So the most common pellet dosage that we usually use for our female patients can range from six milligram, 10 milligrams to 12.5 milligrams. And I am referring to the estradiol pellet in milligrams. And estradiol is the good form of estrogen. For a female, testosterone pellets can range from 25 milligrams, 37.5 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 87.5 milligrams, or even up to 100 milligrams. For male, the pellets for testosterone range between 100 milligram to 200 milligrams. Sometimes in a male patient, we actually have the procedure done with about 8 to 10 pellets. And that can be between 1,800 milligrams of testosterone all the way to 2,000 milligrams of testosterone. Again, depending on the individual needs. In the U.S., these pellets are considered a control three substance, so they need to be locked up in th with three different locks. Before we do any kind of pellet procedure on our patients, we need to test their serum blood level. In female labs, these are the labs that we're looking for. Pre-insertion labs include testosterone, total testosterone, bioavailable testosterone, and free testosterone, estradiol, FSH, TSH, T4, free, T3, free, TSH, TPO, vitamin D, B12, and a CBC. After the female patient is being pellet, about four to six weeks, we would like them to follow up with post 
pellet labs. These labs may include vitamin D if the initial labs are not within that optimum levels. And optimum levels of vitamin D, we like to keep them at between 50 to 70. So post labs also include testosterone, total, bioavailable, free. Also, if thyroid medication is suggested, we would like to look at their TSH, T3 free, and T4 free as well. We also need to look at their estradiol, their FSH level, and also their CBC. For a male, pre-insertion labs includes testosterone, total, free, bioavailable, also their thyroid panel, which includes TSH, T4 free, T3 free, TPO, vitamin D, CBC, PSA, and also estradiol. For male pulse insertion labs includes total testosterone, free testosterone, bioavailable testosterone, estradiol, and of course the thyroid panel if thyroid is implemented, thyroid meds are implemented, that includes TSH, T4 free, T3 free, and also TPO. We also like to look at their vitamin D level for follow-up labs if their vitamin D level is not at optimum range, which should be between 50 to 70. We also need to look at their CBC, especially their hematocrit and their hemoglobin. Male pulse labs, usually within four to six weeks, four weeks if they do not feel any difference, six weeks if they do. Patient triage includes, we always take their vital signs before administering pellet therapy. We weigh our patients and we look at their history, their questionnaire, any kind of history of cancer, heart disease, menstrual cycle, pap smear, mammogram, or hysterectomy. Weight, of course, our dose is based upon their weight. And please document all their medications. Our post pellet procedure includes complete patient teaching of post insertion instructions. Please give the patient a copy of these post insertion handout. Provide and review the what might occur handout with the patients. It will prevent so many unnecessary phone calls if the patients are correctly informed. Please reiterate the post lab follow up and the importance of it because we need to remeasure to figure out if that first initial pellet dose is what the patient is needed. About four to six weeks, remeasure their labs. Again, reiterate the necessary of the nutraceuticals recommended by their provider, such as their DIM, their liver detox, and an adrenal support if the patient is lack of it. Thyroid medication must be properly monitored. So please provide education on thyroid medication. Thyroid medication should always be be taken every a.m. on an empty stomach. Signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism is when they put their hand out and then it starts to tremor, 
that means they're having too much thyroid. Also, another sign and symptom of having too much thyroid can be increase in anxiety or heart palpitation. So when we start a patient on a new thyroid medication, or when the provider changes the patient's thyroid dosage, you must always order their TSH, their T3 free, T4 free, and it must be remeasured in three months. Again, when we change the patient's thyroid dosage, or if we initially place a patient on a thyroid medication, please remeasure their TSH, their T3, T4, within three months. And please also document when a dose is increased and make sure you document there's no tremors or heart palpitation. Post palate procedure. The secret for patient compliance. Write it all down for them. Lots of information can be very overwhelming. And also get a signed copy of these post palate instructions. So routine and repetition is so important to ensure each patient that gets the same type of education. Let's talk about the procedure. Drawing syringes. Supplies includes 10 cc syringe, lidocaine between 1% to 2%, and we prefer it with the epinephrine to decrease the bleeding. Sodium bicarbonate, the draw needle should be an 18 gauge needle, and then a 23 gauge and one and a half inch needle is used. The mixture. The mixture of lidocaine with epinephrine and sodium bicarbonate might vary depending on the provider's preference. For a male patient, we usually use between eight to 10 cc of lidocaine and two cc of sodium bicarbonate. So also use about 10 to 12 cc total and please do not over inject. Again, for male, Use between 10 to 12 cc total and do not over inject. For a female, we usually use between 8 to 10 cc of lidocaine and 2 cc of sodium bicarbonate. And we usually use a total of 6 to 8 cc and do not over inject. In a busy office, sometimes it is very helpful for us to pre-draw the lidocaine syringes. If pre-drawn syringes, it should be labeled and it should be used within 24 hours. A lot of times after the patient's initial three months of pellet therapy, Of course, they would start feeling a difference for female between three to 10 days, for male, about seven to 10 days. And through time after three months, four months, five months, and six months, and also up to like about 36 months, they will start feeling so much better, such as their muscle mass starts to increase, their bone density starts to increase, their stamina, everything else starts to do really, really well as they continuously use the pellet therapy. Case number one, a 50 year old male, height 5'10", weight 168, symptoms, decreased energy, 
decreased muscle tone, low motivation, high intensity workout, such as weights and cycling. So what we do was that we administer bioidentical hormones. These are hormones that rep resembles the same exact molecular structure as your body's natural testosterone. So he is a minister, a total testosterone level of 1800 milligrams, which in total is nine pellets at 200 milligrams each. So this is case history number one. These are the type of patients we see. Initial labs, we notice that his total cholesterol level is 295. Two months after post pellet therapy, his cholesterol level drops down to 260. His total LDL is at a 210. Two months after post pellet, dropped down to 184 triglycerides. Initially, 114. Two months later, after pellet therapy, 109. Total testosterone prior to pellet therapy is sitting at 263. Post pellet therapy, it goes up to 1577. His free testosterone was at a ratio of 1 to 1 at 1.1. Post pellet therapy, after two months, his free testosterone went up to 284. Case 2 57 year old female, height 5'4, weight. 154. She's been in menopause since 2015. Her symptoms, night sweats, hot flashes, brain fog, low libido, and she was referred by her husband actually. She was administered bioidentical hormone pellet therapy testosterone, a dosage of 125 milligrams, and estradiol at 10 milligrams. Estradiol usually stays in the body for about six months. So when a patient comes back to be repelleted, especially for female, their pellets last about three to four months. And when they return between three to four months, we don't give them another 10 milligrams of estradiol. Sometimes we'll hold the estradiol on the second round, or sometimes we reduce it down to six milligrams of estradiol and keep everything at bay. So pre bile identical hormone labs, so pre pellet labs, her total cholesterol was sitting at a 225. Two months after her pellets, it dropped down to 197. Her LDL was at a 123. After her pellets, two months later, 102. Her triglycerides were at a 116. After pellets, it went down to a 79. Her total testosterone prior to pellets were 16. Post pellets came up to 134. Her free testosterone was sitting at a 1.8. Post pellets, it went up to a 17.6. And yes, for female, the testosterone, the total testosterone, that range is so outdated. So what we usually see in our practice for a female to feel physiologically amazing with an energy level that is kind of like really sustainable and their ability to think and actually decrease their anxiety and depression. We usually see their total testosterone 
sitting at about 100 and sometimes it goes all the way up to 300 as well. So it really depends on the individual and where the numbers are best for them. And that's why we do post labs to gauge and communication with your patient is really, really important because everybody is so different. Case number three, 51 year old male, height six zero, weight 263 pounds, symptoms, lack of energy, fatigue, lack of focus, weight gain, irritability, low libido, joint pain, muscle aches and pain. So he was a minister testosterone pellet dosage of 1800 milligrams, which is a total of nine pellets. His pre-pellet labs, total cholesterol was 212. It dropped down to 185 after two months of his first round of pellets. His LDL 124 it went down to 109. Triglycerides, he was sitting at a 59, then it went up to a 124. And that is actually dietary habits, and we'll go and talk a little bit about that. His total testosterone was at a 576 pre-pellet, and then post-pellet, it's sitting at a 1423. His free testosterone was sitting at a 99. Post pellets, it went up to 301. Let's talk to, about his triglycerides. Why did it jump from 59 to 124? Well, this patient come in feeling tired and lethargic, so he wasn't working out at all. So now after his pellets, he's feeling absolutely amazing, which we always see in our patients. And what they do is that they feel like they have more energy and they're more motivated to go and work out. So when he start working out, he start adapting a more ketogenic type of a diet, which composed of a very high protein. And we will talk a little bit about our four-step program, which includes detoxification, nutrification, fortification, and also the power of the mind. So a lot of times these ketogenic type of diet puts a lot of stress on your kidneys. And we want to talk about detoxifying the body and nutrifying the body, putting the right kind of nutrients back into your body so your body can heal itself. And sometimes long term of a high protein diet will eventually bring your cholesterol level back up again. Case number four, a 56-year-old female. She is 5'8", she weighs 195 pounds. Her symptoms include anxiety, mental fog, forgetfulness, weight gain, bloating, frequent UTI, urinary tract infection. She feels depressed. She can't sleep throughout the night. She wakes up multiple times. She's experiencing hot flashes, night sweats, no libido whatsoever, and vaginal dryness. And it's really sad because a lot of these patients, they come in and when they have no sex drive and they don't feel good, it really seeps into their personal relationship. It really puts a toll on their marriage as well. So at our practice, what we see is that when we balance these hormones, the male or the female hormones, they start to feel so much better. And there's so many marriages that we save by just making everyone feel better. And when you feel better, you feel a lot sexier and you're more prone to increase your sex drive, increase in motivation, and so you uh, have an increase in energy level as well. So back to our case number four, her she was pelleted at 150 milligrams of testosterone and also a 
10 milligrams of estradiol. So prior to coming to us, she was using an estradiol patch and a testosterone cream. A lot of times when a patient is placed on bioidentical hormones, such as a cream or a patch, sometimes the cream isn't absorbing. So what we did was that we did preliminary laps on her, pre-therapy laps, what we call pre-pellet laps. Her total cholesterol was at a 212. Two months later, it dropped down to a 185. Her LDL was sitting at a 124. It went down to a 109. Her triglycerides was sitting at a 59. It went kind of up to like a 124. And then her total testosterone was at a 576. It went up. So how long will the patient notice an improvement after pellet therapy? For a male, about 10 to 14 days. Our male patients usually feel the increase in energy and sex drive and sexual performance actually within three to five days. But we usually tell the patient between 10 to 14 days. Everybody's so different. For a female patient, we usually tell them between three to 10 days. Our female patients usually feel the mental clarity and an increase in sex drive within three days. So how long does the pellets last? For a male, it lasts about five to six months, depending on the level of activities. For a female, it lasts about three to four months, again, depending on the level of activities. Patient retention when it comes to pellet therapy is about 93%. So remember, yesterday's unorthodox treatment is tomorrow's standard of care. This pellet therapy is just absolutely amazing and I feel like it is the gold standard of what we're doing with our bioidentical hormones. One in seven pre-menopausal women die from heart disease. One in three post-menopausal women die from heart disease. So that's an alarming number. Alzheimer's disease. Women get Alzheimer's disease eight to one over men. Women on estrogen are more likely to be 50% less to develop Alzheimer's disease. In other words, women on estrogen are 50% less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. Men with low testosterone are three times more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. Arthritis. Actually, hormones could ease pain. About 10% of men and 18% of women greater than the age of 60 have osteoarthritis. Both estrogen and testosterone can stimulate these pre-cartilage cells, possibly by reversing the development of arthritic tissue. So these testosterone pellets, these testosterone actually helps to decrease your pain. So let's always remember proper nutrition is the key in maintaining your hormonal balance along with your testosterone pellet therapy. So don't forget our four-step program 
Number one, let's detoxify the body. Let's get rid of that toxin. Number two, let's neutrify the body. Let's put the good nutrients back into your system. Number four, number three, fortify the body. Let's balance your hormones. Let's make sure your stem cells are up to par. And we can talk about a little bit about peptides. And number four, the power of the mind. And that's so important because positive mindset is what really helps us to get to that better, that, that energy level, that better level in life. And always remember, biology before pharmacology. Let's go and balance the root cause of the problem and get our patients better and get people feeling great and feeling well. So let's go back and reiterate step number one, detoxify the body. What does that mean? Any type of movement helps to stimulate your lymphatic system. We also suggest a sauna, which helps to eliminate toxins. And we also supplement our patients as well. Sometimes we recommend them to get on something called a liver detox that helps to, everything goes through the liver, it helps to detoxify their liver. And hormones are produced in our livers, in our adrenal glands, in our testes as well, especially in men with the testes. And glucothione is the mother of all antioxidants. So we recommend for you to take something like that to detoxify the body. Nutrification. That means let's make sure we put the right type of nutrients back into your body. Raw whole foods helps to regulate your bowels. So the small intestine is about 23 feet long. Everything has to be broken down and absorbed through that small intestine. So moving your bowel movements on a regular basis really helps to not only detoxify the body, but it helps your body to absorb all the good foods that you're feeding it. So eating nutrient-dense foods such as bok choy and broccoli really helps to increase your body's immune system. It helps to increase the nutrient density that your body needs to heal itself. And supplementation such as red beets, greens, such as green leafy vegetables, and also adrenal support. The adrenals is so important. It helps to support your cortisol. It helps to support your stress. Fortify. Number three, you have to fortify your body with the right type of hormones. You have to keep your hormones in balance, such as Christin, beta cysterine, tripolis, your DIM. Also, you can also look into peptide therapies such as PT141, CJC1295, oxytocin, stem cell therapy, It helps to rebuild, repair, and regrow new tissue. Supplementations such as DNA, RNA protector, astragalus root, beetroot extract, pomegranate, and also grapeseed extract, power and speed. So there are a lot of things that you can do to really fortify your body with the right type of nutrients so you're your body can heal itself from the inside out. And of course, the power of the mind. So we talk about the neural reprogramming, brain tap, meditation, and also yoga. Well, that concludes our session for today. And what we're going to do is that we're going to walk you over to the next session with our coaching, our training, training our doctors, training our providers on corrective therapy, such as pellet therapy, which we cover in this session. Then we move on to peptides, stem cell, and also supplementation.